Last year, Sai headed out to Iceland for an epic ride with some of the most stunning scenery he'd ever seen. And he came back raving about it, saying that if I ever got the chance to go, I absolutely had to go. So when Icelandic bike brand Lauf, with their intriguing forks and true grit gravel bike, invited us out to race the rift, I put my hand up straight away, not knowing at all what I was getting myself in for, only to find out that it's a 200 kilometer race on gravel. Right, before we get any further, let me explain to you what the Rift is. The Rift is a self-supported event which involves racing 200 kilometers off-road in the southwest of Iceland, across lava fields, through rivers, and around some of the world's most active volcanoes. It contains over 1,500 meters of climbing with checkpoints along the route. There are four checkpoints. You must reach each of them within the cutoff period or be eliminated. You cannot receive outside assistance during the race. And if you'd like to see it, the full route can be downloaded through Kamut. We'll have a link in the description. So how much experience do I have gravel racing? Uh, well, uh, none, actually. And how much experience do I have with river crossings? None. And how much experience do I have riding 200 kilometers? Well, actually, quite a lot, but only on roads. <sighs> this race is gonna be like nothing that I've ever done before. And I feel totally out of my comfort zone. I'm pretty nervous, but I had some cycling New Year's resolutions and they were to ride in a place that's completely different to anywhere I've ever been and to do a discipline that I've never done before. And this is both of those things. Now, the pro racers who are lining up to do this are going to be fighting it out for the coveted wool jersey. But my primary goals are just to finish and have fun. But time to head to the start line now. Wish me luck. <laughs> I'm going to need it. <laughs> I'm on the start line now, and uh, I'm a little bit nervous. There's a lot of dudes and dudettes here that look like they've done this lots of times before. <laughs> Rather serious. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just going to give it my best. And uh, it's a little bit chilly this morning, threatening to rain. Got plenty of kit on from Asos and... Uh, also, my pockets are crammed full of gels to keep me going, so <laughs> hopefully I'll be all right. All right, we're two minutes to start. Just under a quarter of the way in now, uh, coming up to 50k, and man, this is savage. Having never done anything like this before, I didn't know what to expect, and there's lots of little constant accelerations. Thankfully, the first part of the route is most of the elevation, so got a nice downhill bit, but uh, yeah. I'm not doing too bad, and I am loving it. I mean, how could you not? Look at this. You can't see anyone. It's like I've got it to myself. It's amazing. What a landscape, what a landscape. Oh my god! 
wondering what is this rather nice bike I'm riding and what's going on with that weird looking fork well I'm not going to explain now because I'm knackered but here's something I filmed earlier <laughs> well it's a Lauf true grit a dedicated gravel racing machine cool isn't it and that funky fork well that works by way of a leaf spring design to give you 30 mil of travel at the front. And I love anything to do with engineering and things like that. And it's a really clever and simplistic mechanism that's largely maintenance free. And it works by way of these glass fiber blades that are able to flex. Now, we're increasingly seeing suspension fitted to gravel bikes, but Something I wondered was why not just fit a traditional shock absorber to a bike like this? Well, Lauf reckons that the leaf spring design offers substantial advantages for a bike of this type over a standard shock, and for good reason. It's able to rapidly respond to high frequency small bumps with astonishing speed. Now, it's really hard to see in real time, but check this out when we go slow-mo. Now, while it wouldn't be as effective as a traditional shock if you were dealing with the big impacts when mountain biking on a trail, Lauf reckons that it's far more effective at these smaller bumps that you encounter gravel riding and is able to better keep your front wheel in contact with the trail and maintain traction. The fork also has quite a lot of rake and that's coupled with a really slack head tube angle of just 70.4 degrees, which is there to give you really predictable and stable handling when you're on the loose surfaces. There's also a nice no-nonsense approach to this bike. It's intended to just be really functional. So you've got a standard round bar and stem. You've got a sort of standard seat post collar rather than a fussy integrated one that might get lost in the frame or more easily damaged in a rough environment. And it's also got an English threaded external bottom bracket for durability, which I like. And mine's fitted with SRAM one by hydraulic disc brakes, a 42 42 easiest gear and I've also got some 40 millimeter tubeless tires on there which is ideal for gravel. I've got my Wahoo on there, my Topeak waterproof saddlebag and my favorite feature of this bike in place of the front mech I've got a bottle opener. Now whoever came up with that idea on this bike I don't know who they are but I want to be friends with them. Hopefully that will come in handy at the finish if I make it to the finish. <laughs> the indignity of this. <laughs> oh man, this is ridiculous. Oh, so steep. Oh. One does not simply walk into Mordor. One rides a bike, apparently. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> God's sake. There we go. across here oh man for god's sake uh things quite deep this bit 
<laughs> Being a gravel noob, I'm quite nervous when it gets a bit technical or fast downhill and I'm kind of, you can notice myself getting dropped by more experienced riders in those sections, but I'm conscious of this, so last night did a bit of revision, didn't I? Watch some, uh, watch some of Jay Powell's videos. Throw together some tips that I think are gonna help you crush your next gravel ride that I have learned from over the years of riding much skinnier tires and it wasn't on a gravel bike. Hopefully they help you not crash and keep rocks at your knee. Nearly. Bloody hell. I need to watch some cross videos. <laughs> now I've never been to Iceland, so I did a few, looked up a few facts before coming here. And I found out that Iceland has quite a lot in common with where I'm from, which is Doncaster. Now, they both have a population of about 300,000 people. And they're also both rich in musical talent. So Iceland's got Bjork. Doncaster's got Louis Tomlinson from One Direction. Iceland's got Sigur Ross. Doncaster's got Tony Christie. But for me, the only real difference between coming on a bike ride in Iceland to that in Doncaster is, well, when you do a bike ride here, you get given a briefing about what to do in the event of a volcanic eruption. So somewhere over there is Hecla. Now Hecla erupted in 1980. It erupted in 1991. It erupted in 2000. It pretty much erupts every 10 years, except it hasn't for the last 10 years. It's nine years late, so any day now. Gravel noob. What's a plug? I got a puncture. What a nice chap. Gave me a plug. Been riding on black gravel most of the day, which is, well, stuff that's been spewed out of volcanoes, but. Now we're on a white bit, it's really weird. If there's any geography teachers watching, please send your answers in. So the route, 200k, 15% of it is road, 85% is gravel. This is one of the small road sections I've just found myself on. But they're not rubbish roads. Like, this is an incredible road. It's like one of those sort of road porn Route 66 kind of roads. It's amazing. The thing is with this route is I just can't believe it because normally when you do a six, like a massive, massive ride, there's amazing bits. And then there's a few bits that are a bit meh. But this ride is just consistent the whole way. It's just incredible scenery. It's astounding. One thing's for sure, and that's, this might be my first trip to Iceland, and my first gravel event, but it's not gonna be the last of either of those two things. Oh man, you've gotta come here. the last 
last river crossing. Woo! I think it's like about 15k to go now. And I am spent. Oh, but the sun's out. It looks amazing. And the incredible thing about this place just blow me away. Like, there's been several moments in this ride where in every direction, like 360 degrees around you, there is nothing as far as the eye can see. Like, I mean like no man-made kind of habitation or anything. It's just so expansive and untouched. It's, it's an incredible place. Look at this. Oh, glorious. Glorious. Oh man, where are the hot springs at? Also, I need, I need a beer. Oh man, I'm absolutely spent, but I made it, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never done an event like this, and I'm sure <laughs> there are many of you who've never done an event like this either. So if you haven't, I can't suggest it highly enough. I can't recommend it highly enough. Dip your toe in. You won't regret it. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to GCM. And to watch another video, then you can see a Lauf factory tour, how these bikes are made, sided it. Click on the highly functional bottle opener. <laughs> I'm gonna go have a rest. <laughs>